Okay, we're at the end of uh, this beginner's guide to uh, DAX, and we're going to do a video. I'm going to do a, an advanced example here. They might might um, go on for a little bit longer than some of the other videos. We'll see. We'll see how quickly I can get through it and explain it at the same time. But I really, out of this, I want to show you like where you can get to with 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 DAX, okay? Because we, we've only we've literally scratched the surface. I mean, we probably haven't. We've gone over some really good fundamental things, but in terms of like what you could get to from your analysis inside of Power BI. I would say we haven't even gone through about five percent of the potential okay and um you know, but there's nothing around you know, we've gone through probably the most important things you know with with with, with learning dax but in terms of just where you could take it to but here's gonna, we're going to work through an example here so that you can um you know really really get to see what's possible okay so i'm just gonna just work up a few things and and i'll work, I'll work pretty fast like um just to show you you know what you can achieve pretty fast if you know what you're doing and so I'm going to create another um, function here. I'm going to call this one total cost because we never actually created that one. And so I'm going to use sum x. I'm going to go through the sales table. And then down here, I'm going to go quantity, quantity times the related cost because we have a cost column in our products table, right? So very similar to, to our total sales. But now I have in my model now, I have total sales on the right hand side. I also have total cost now. So because of that, I can branch out, okay? And I can branch out pretty easily now to total profits. And I, you, you see here that I'm not referencing anything in the table anymore. I'm just referencing measures within measures. And this is this is measure branching. This is this methodology that, that, that I have. And it's a far more effective way to do it than having to write rewrite out all of these advanced formulas. So you build things up from simple and you're able to get advanced pretty quickly, okay? And so now I have I have my costs and I have my profits. And so I can format these um, just like that, okay? So now we have profits. Now what I wanna do is I wanna work out, okay, out of my profits in a, in a time selection we have, right? Who are associated with my top ranked customers? Who are my mid ranked customers? And who are the rest? Okay. And so, what we have to do, we have to do a little bit, of, we have to do quite a bit of work here, okay, to actually make it work. Um, but once you once you get the hang of it, you can actually do it pretty quick. Okay. So, what I need to first do is create this, uh, what, a, what is called a supporting table. Okay. So, I'm going to quickly call um, this one customer, um, customer groups. Okay. And I'm going to create a simple table here uh, called groups. I'm going to go top 50, rank 50 to 200, and then the rest. I'm going to call them the rest, okay? And then I'm going to go min and max. Okay, this is this is this is quite a common um, technique where you where you create a supporting table like this, and um, we're going to run some logic through the supporting table. Okay, and then I'm just gonna put 5,000 here. Okay, then I'm gonna load this in. So I've just ran, you could create that table in a couple of ways, but I've just um, done it within Power BI, just quick and easy. And then I'm just gonna jump to the model. Whenever, whenever you do something inside of um, Power BI is, is in a table, you wanna make sure that um, you sort it out in the model. Now, what I do with my supporting tables is I actually put them down the bottom here. I'm just going to get rid of this one because we don't actually need it. I'm going to delete it from the model. Okay. It's not part of our core model, but what we're going to do is we're going to actually run some logic through it based on based on the ranking of our customers. Okay. Now, I'm now going to write out a pretty complex formula once this updates. Uh, and, and basically, it's going to enable me to group my customers or my sales into particular groups. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to come back in here. And if we have a look in here, I'll just show you what, what this is actually done. So we now have a table where I've got these groups, right? So there's top 50, the rest and um, rank 50 to, two, two, 50 to 200. What I can also do is I can actually um, sort these so that they make a bit more sense. So I can sort this column just like we've done with the other ones by say the mint. And then I'll come back into here. So now we've got top 50. So we've got them in order. So basically what I want to see is I want to see what the sales are because we've obviously got 
all of our sales. So if I just brought my sales um, into here, into a card, you'll see that my sales are 15 million odd, right? Which is reflected down here, 15 million. Um, we could also have a look, sorry, we're actually gonna dive into our profits actually. So we could also have a look at our profits. Profits are 5 million and you'll see here that our um, profits are 5 million. But what happens if we bring the um, that result, so those profits, right? Say we bring it into here. You see that that 5 million goes across every single row here. Be that's because this has no relationship. There's no relationship here to the rest of our model, okay? And so what we need to do is we need to, within formula, make sure that we divide up this profit correctly by based on the ranking of our customers. Um, we only want the top 50 ranking to uh, customers to be in this bucket here, this bucket here, and this bucket here, okay? Um, so on and so forth, okay? So that's where we've got to write some advanced formula, okay? And this this is pretty advanced, okay? This is, this is, this is getting up there in terms of advanced work inside of Power BI, but, it can, um, but it's 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 achievable. It's so achievable, and that's the exciting thing in my in my view. Okay, so I'm just going to write this out really quickly, and we'll and we'll review it um, shortly. So total profits, and I'm going to filter values, customer name, because what I want to do here is I'm going to iterate through every single customer and work out what ranking they are. Okay, then I'm going to count rows here, and then I'm going to have filter customer groups so i can do this pretty pretty quickly and then i'm going to go rank x use a, fun a function called rank x which is a ranking formula and then i'm going to go customer name to profits and then descend them it is greater than customer um, min yep okay and then i'm going to go and I'm going to copy this. So it's exactly the same thing. I'm going to go less than or equal to the max. Okay, and then to finish it off, I'm going to go my over zero. And just pop another one in there. Okay, so let's just drag this in and we'll have a look at what returns first of all. Um, so, so, and then we can we can review the actual formula and what is actually doing. Okay, so let's just update this. So you see that we're now getting results here that add up to exactly the same amount, but the buckets are correct now. They are now representing just the profits in that group, and just the profits in this group, and just the profits in this group but the total is exactly the same, which is pretty cool, right? Okay, so what is actually going on here? Let's simplify it down. We still wanna calculate our profits, right? We're still cal cal calculating our profits, but we're changing the context in which we are calculating them, okay? We basically have to generate some context here because at the moment there's none, because there's no relationship from this, this dimension within our data model. So what we want, what we need to do is for every individual result here, we need to iterate through every single customer. And that's what values does inside of filter. Filter enables us to um, add a, um, a table function. In this case, we've created a unique list of every single customer. We're iterating through those customers. And then we're saying for every single customer, go and work out what the ranking is of that customer and work out is that ranking greater than any of the mins and is that ranking less than any of the maxes. So customers will always be in one bucket, right? Because there'll be some sort of ranking between one to what, how, however many customers we have. And so they will be in one, and they, will, they will make it into one of those buckets because we've arranged the buckets in that table to not overlap, okay? So you see here, 0 to 50, 50 to 200, 200 to 5,000, okay? And so every single customer is only going to evaluate to true once, and what this count rows does is, is it says if it evaluates to true, so if there is one row remaining, 
if there is one row remaining, then we want that customer to be in that particular group. And the great thing here is that because there is, even though there's no context in this particular dimension over profits, there is context being generated over this min and max because you've got to remember that this min and max came from, comes from the same table as that dimension. So what's happening is we're iterating through every single customer, but we're only evaluating if they, were, uh, if they are between the min and max in this particular row. So we're only saying um, evaluate, um, keep all the customers that evaluated to the top 50, keep all the customers that are 50 to 20. And so we're creating this additional context with this logic to then go and calculate up eventually the profits of just those customers. Okay, so that's pretty cool stuff, right? This is pretty pretty advanced stuff, and it's amazing like what you can get to pretty quickly with within Power BI. But hopefully, you're seeing how you can combine a lot of these things very very quickly. But you can you can actually take this even further. Check this out. Um, say, for instance, I wanted to work out the percentage. What if I wanted to work out the percentage? So I could go new measure here, and I could say customer. Um, profit group percent okay I could here just simply write divide the customer group profits by the total profits right because the total profits always evaluates to that 5 million in this particular context and so I'm going to drag this across here so you see what's going to happen? It's going to go that divided by this, that divided by that, this divided by that. And then if I bring this in here, I then now have a percentage. And that that is not difficult from where we were, right? And now I have a percentage for um, all of these different groups. And I don't even need these intermediary calcs if I don't want. I can just have this particular calculation by itself and all the other DAX measures will work just in behind the scenes to, to run this calculation. And then I can even take this further, check this out. What I can do is I can um, add to it some other additional context like, um, let's, let's add the month and year. Okay, let's add the month and year and we'll turn this into a percentage chart. Uh, this needs to be swapped around. So this needs to be up here. No, this needs to be up here, and this needs to be down here. Okay, and so now what I have is by month, what um, grouping of customers is producing the most profit for us, and we can see how that changes over time. Pretty cool, right? Pretty cool how that actually um, how that actually works. Okay. So I think what I want to do is um, round off there because this, this video, as I, as I said at the start, would go on for a little bit long. But hopefully you're recognizing the potential here. Hopefully you're recognizing what is actually possible with um, you know quite advanced DAX formula. I mean, it, it's it's truly quite it is quite uh, quite amazing if you if you really um, start utilizing it and and diving into how these how these formulas how these formulas actually work. Okay, and how they evaluate um, over, you know, whatever scenario you put in front of it, whatever environment you have in, inside of your Power BI report. Okay, this rounds off um, the, the the course basically. So ho hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, what we'll do next is we'll just um, go through like where can you find out more information and then how can you take your abilities to to the next level with with, with DAX because you know there's still so much you can learn so I want to I want to dive into that and I want to show you how how enterprise DNA can really facilitate that for you okay let's uh, let's let's move on to that